Here's, here's a PubMed and CBI M and like this is a medical journal. So I mean, like, yeah, look, wait, 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 Okay, you know what? Just hold it up for me. Hold it anyone. up for me. 0.0018%, almost 100 times lower than Fausto Sterling estimate of 1.7. So it is because they are. Like, can you hold about that up to the camera? Well, so. Welcome back to part two of our Change My Mind installment, specifically on the uh, topic that biological males should not compete in women's sports. Well, at least that's what it was supposed to be. See, yesterday I sat down and spoke with Isaac, and although we disagreed, we had a productive, almost hour-long discussion. But in case you've forgotten, civility wasn't exactly on everybody's mind that day. And these are adults acting this way in college. At UNT, the Harvard of Denton County, no less. And I had to wonder, why would college students ever think it's acceptable to behave this way? Enter one of their self-described mentors, Stephen Monticelli. All right, that's okay. We're we're comfortable with our masculinity. The more you can move in, the better. No, so all right, we can... so we can actually. Oh, you got the mic on the desk. Oh, there you go. Here, I'll put yeah, it on you. That? Your name is Stephen. That's right, Stephen. Monticelli is a contributing writer at Rolling Stone and the Daily Beast, where he specializes in leftist talking points and attacking college students. He's even made an appearance on CNN's New Day. That's right. Also, this noted Inspector Gadget impressionist who cosplays as Indiana Jones enthusiast had clearly been waiting for Change My Mind to come to UNT, the Harvard of Denton County, for quite some time, and he just couldn't hide his enthusiasm. All right, good. Do you spell P H or V? The V. Same way, very nice. That's Fewer right. letters means a cooler name. Uh, last name? Monticelli, I'll spell it for you. Okay. M O N A C E L L I. <laughs> so, German. Italian. Boy, missed all of that one. Missed it by that much. Just a little bit, but you know, both of those countries have a certain history for a certain type of politics, but we're not here to talk about that today. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I don't know how I got that one wrong. It's almost like, uh, almost like I wasn't even trying. Oh look, the sense of humor mobile. It's not stopping here. So, Steve. Steven, Steve, how do you prefer? Steven. By the way, I like this, uh, this jacket. Can I? Thanks. Yeah, go for it. Is it a raincoat? Or is it's it just, just a... like a co cotton jacket, been, like, I guess, surplus. Okay. Military well, the whole surplus. outfit works. Thanks. Um, so, Stephen, I don't know how familiar you are at all with uh, what we do with this uh, kind of installment is, but it's basically a way where we can hopefully rationalize our positions on controversial topics. A lot of the times, people can have somewhat rational conversations on topics that maybe don't evoke an emotional response, and then it all goes out the window, as you've seen here on college campuses with Dancing Yoda and people throwing milkshakes and screaming and all these kinds of things, which we generally like to avoid. Now, spoiler alert, this is about to go sideways very quickly. So uh, today's topic is one, obviously, we planned for a while, but now it's in the news because of Leah Thomas. I don't believe that biological uh, males should be allowed to compete with women biological females in women's sports. Uh, if you uh, disagree with me, uh, I'm more than happy to hear your case and let you change my mind. So I guess before we get into it, what is your definition of the term biological female? Is that something that would include people who are assigned female at birth that were born intersex? So this is interesting that you're bringing up this point intersex. You're talking about the 0.01% of the it's population. A, it's about 1.5, 1.7, because there are surgeries that are done to babies when they're babies, when they're born, yeah. and then they assign them a gender. So let me address two different points here. Sure. First off, what I'm saying with biological males and females is the overwhelming majority of people, uh, of course, across the globe since the beginning of time, who are born as a male, born as a female. You can go not only by chromosomes, but secondary sex so characteristics. So like, if there's on, a, let me, are there 100 second. people here? Hold on, let me finish. Uh, and then I'll address your second point. Okay. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. sure. So doctors, for example, fill out male or female. Now we're talking about sex, right? We're not talking about identified gender. I'm assuming that you would agree so that sex agree is a biological a term and gender is there's a, def there's a, a social a difference. Between I understand that's how gender theory is presented, certainly in gender studies on college campus. Sure. With intersex, it's about 0.01% of the population, and the vast majority of them. Once again, it's the vast one, majority of them don't require any kind of a sex change. That's actually not an accurate. Statistic. I did an accurate statistic. I can pull up I don't the make Google all statistic the references available. Right now, it's 
1.5%. Uh, 1.5% 1 of the population is not intersex. Well, they're born that and way. And then a very small percentage of them are improperly assigned with a primary sex at birth. They usually yeah, have primary sexual characteristics, okay? So, so primary sexual characteristics, and very few have to end up going with some kind of a sex change operation later in life. Because it's often that? done when they're children or when they're babies. Right, or they're assigned male, female at birth, even so, if they're so, intersex. So, yeah, I guess doctor. that's what I'm trying to get at. Are you talking so about what I'm doing with, So we, if we separate that, intersex, okay? So let's say we well, allow intersex we? to compete. No, I'm saying let's say we allow intersex to compete in the division they choose. How do you, how do you, Prove Let's, that there, and how do you even get to that question of are you or are you not? Are you asking then that there has to be a box that people have to tick that they were intersex? I'm, con I'm confused by you presenting the argument here because you asked me about intersex. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is there are edge cases here that I don't think that your presentation actually encompasses. And I just encompassed it. So if people so you, what are intersex? allowed, so that someone who is born with both female and male sex characteristics. There you go, now you've got it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then there are the surgeries box. that are done you just to them. The box. But someone would have to ask them that. Yes. So are you proposing that people are asked that? What I'm saying is if someone is intersex, let's allow that to be an exception. So how let's do say we that someone who's intersex that that can compete case. in any division they want to. How do we know? They that would have to declare if they're intersex. So you're asking. And they would be submitted, they would obviously be examined by a doctor just okay. as the women are in women's sports and men yeah. are in men's sports. Just as they have to submit to not only blood sampling for drug tests, hair follicle sampling, often nail scrapings, right? Mm -hmm. We both know that physicals are conducted mm -hmm. in all sports to separate for what? Sex, right? To separate for weight, to separate for... When I was playing height? sports when I was a kid, no one ever inspected my genitals. Really? No. You never had to turn your head and cough? Well, that wasn't for doing sports. That's called a physical. That's a medical thing that was separate from being able to do sports. Yeah, so you never had to do a full medical? I mean... So you must not have played sports at a high level. Because they, they really do, everyone has about. to pass a medical. So, you do realize that at Division One sports, you would have to pass a medical. You know so, why? so the medical would be a description of your genitals? Would that be, It would include it? It would include a written description and a verbal description. Yes. Really? This really? medical examination, yeah, would include the mm. description of your vitals, okay. of your health, okay. of your health parameters. So I guess now that we've gone through that, what is? But we the, haven't gone through that. What is the reason that you're? We haven't gone through that. You so if you're concerned, if you're less concerned about intersex people, then why are you so concerned about transgender people? Again, I was answering your question. You asked about well, intersex. They both they both get they both get surgeries. Sometimes they both need hormone treatment. What, what's your what's your position against? If you're okay with one, why are you yeah. not okay so with the there's other? A, well, here's exactly why. First off, you're taking an extreme example to make a point, misrepresenting those statistics. It's not 1.5% <laughs> of the population. Right, I'll just Google it. In it's, the country. It's, it's fine. You won't find a single position yeah. in the country. Uh, one, according to experts, 1.7% well, of the population is born with intersex traits. Pause a second. Let's analyze his Googling technique. I'll just Google it. It's, it's, it's fine. You won't find a single position yeah. in the country. Well, one quite expert. Huh. A two-click Google search. It's almost as if he had the whole thing planned out poorly. 1.7% of the population is born with intersex traits. It's That's just, from amnesty.org. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can just, like, keep, keep, I can go to... It's from amnesty.org. I mean, it's from, there's, there's Wikipedia, there's, there's plenty yes, of... Yes, amnesty and Wikipedia, okay. There's I'll a, here's a PubMed, NCBI, M, and, like, this is a medical journal, so, I mean... Like, yeah, look, hold on a second, let me actually, uh, hold on a second, you, like, you know what, because... Uh, Okay, you know what? Just hold it up for me. Hold it up anyone for me. Hold it up for me. Because you just brought up PubMed, and it yeah. didn't reflect what you just reflected in the So, abstract. 0.0018%, almost 100 times lower than Fausto Sterling estimate of 1.7. So it is because they are. Like, can you hold that up to the camera? Sex. Can you hold that up to the camera? Inconsistent. Can you hold that up to the camera? Sex. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see. There's can you hold it up to the camera? There's a debate about this, which is what we're having. Pause. Now, if you notice the shift, and I mean uh, increase in my enthusiasm, it's because I was intensely familiar with the PubMed paper he was attempting to cite. And by cite, I mean blatantly misrepresent. And by blatantly misrepresent, I mean lie about. And this is the real value of Change My Mind in the conversations being included in their full context unedited. It's one thing to be able to lie about numbers to unsuspecting students in order to score political points. It's another to face accountability in real time. So let's rewind and zoom in and enhance on his screen. Unfortunately, the tech isn't good enough to get a crystal clear picture, but here's the actual PubMed article abstract. 
If the term intersex is to retain any meaning, the term should be restricted to those conditions in which chromosomal sex is inconsistent with phenotypic sex, or in which the phenotype is not classifiable as either male or female. Applying this more precise definition, the true prevalence of intersex is seen to be about 0.018% almost 100 times lower than the Fausto-Sterling estimate of 1.7. Can you hold it up to the camera? There's a debate about this, which is what we're having. Yeah, you can... No wonder the social justice warrior slash handler of Curious George shoved his phone back in his pocket faster than a crack pipe at the bordello of Biden. Yeah, you can Google... But you didn't present it as a debate. You can get different well, The figures. only... Hold on a second. Let me finish it here, because... You just brought up Amnesty.org and Wikipedia. Sure. The only legitimate medical publication that you brought up said exactly what I said. What number did I give you? So, what number so, did I give so you? So then let's like put it into what numbers. Number did I give if you? there are a hundred people here what or a thousand people you? here, if there are a hundred people here or there are a thousand people here, there's still gonna be at least one person. Look, if you're there's not still going gonna to, be at least if one truth person. doesn't matter to you, this isn't going to be a productive. I'm actually giving the numbers. What number did I give to you? So you gave me 0.1%? percent Point zero one percent. Point zero percent. What is that number from PubMed say? <laughs> Let's see, it says point uh point zero eight, which point zero one eight percent. Point zero one eight percent? Yeah. Mm. That's the number I gave you. So let's see what PubMed just said. That is PubMed. You just showed the PubMed. Yeah, I'm just going to pull now up. Now you're going back dog. to NSC.org, you're going to Wikipedia. So my point is, look, you sit here and you spout numbers that are inaccurate. When you go to one legitimate medical journal, uh, it says that it's actually a thousand times lower. So do we want to have a conversation about the topic at hand, or do you want to keep embarrassing yourself with wrong all right. numbers? So if you're going to accept that there are people in this world, no matter how rare that you think that they are, that you're going to allow to participate in no, sports. No matter how rare your own sources no, no, say no, they no, are. No, 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 no matter how rare that there are in existence, it doesn't matter what you think or what I think they exist. The numbers are the numbers. Go Do ahead. you believe that they exist? Of course I believe it. So, 0.018% so, according so to So there are people, so there are people in this state, in this city, yes. who would fit that categorization. And just because there are a small number of them, you're gonna just kind of disregard the And what the number example. of them require some kind of sex change? What number of them require require? Why is that process? so threatening to you? It's not threatening to me. It seems like it is. Well, what's what's bothering to me is your dishonesty. <laughs> so, I'll grant your herring. number. I'll grant your number and my right. argument is still the same. So what's the number of people there who are not accurately defined at birth by their primary and secondary sexual characteristics. So once again, it's about why is it two percent of 0.018 percent of the population? And so because now that's and what's not, the so percentage the point is, of people that are competing small... in sports that are transgender? What's that number of the population? What's that percentage? The number of transgender people. Percentage in the of the total population. 1%. Yeah, and that now, are competing as as the, in sports. The, as far as the categories that they enter, they end up winning about 66 percent, for example, in track, upwards of 90 percent in strength mm -hmm. sports like powerlifting and Olympic mm -hmm. lifting. Mm -hmm. That's significant. Mm. So even though they make up 1% of the population when they enter into female sports, mm. they overwhelmingly tend to dominate, and this is a very small sample size. So my question to you is, what do we do? Because you're supposed to sit here and Are we gonna them. start talking about uh, genetics as it relates to people winning sports? Is that what you wanna do? Is male that what female, you're, at? Is that you're asking? Male sports are separated by biology, yes? I mean, what's the point of sports? To win. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Why is that funny? Uh, it just tells me a lot about who you are. The point of sports is not to win? I think a lot of people think there's more than one point to sports. I mean, so much of sports is like people getting sweaty and like rubbing around with each other. What's the point to winning an Olympic medal? Uh, I don't know. I mean, why do we have the Olympics? to identify who the best is at sport. What is the historical reason why we have the Olympics? Do you mean you want to go back to pancreation? I mean, do we want to talk about, no, like the, the modern you reinvention to, of it. Okay, so. Fascist politics, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so you believe that people are competing, for example, in swimming, decathlon, biathlon, because no, of fascist I think, politics? I think that the overarching mindset that sports is about, you know, declaring dominance and that there's some sort of actual value in like this idea of international representation of dominance in sports. When did you, did you ever have fun in your life? 
Like, you ever have fun playing about, sports? I didn't say it's about representing international dominance. No, but I'm saying it's like, you said it's all about winning. So I said, what, what is the point of sports? What yeah, is the point I, I of think, sports? I think sports is a lot about having fun and, you know, making relationships with people and, and Do you think camaraderie. it's fun to make the Olympic meddling platform? I think that's fun? Go on, think. No, is no. it fun? No, sir. No. No, sir. Absolutely not? Zero fun, sir. All right. I mean, it must provide a sense of accomplishment. Why? A sense of joy, because they worked hard to get there. And the joy and accomplishment comes from what? Working hard to get there, I guess. Wouldn't you do going to great lengths to avoid the term winning a medal? I, I mean, hey, if you get second place and you're a spoiled brat about it, I think a lot of people would think you're kind of lame. Do you think that the uh, Olympic silver medalist who took second place to Leah Thomas, who wouldn't be ranked top 500 in the male division, is being mm. a spoiled brat? Well, what is your solution? Would you uh, want to create an entirely separate category for transgender people in sports? If you want to, we can. Otherwise, no, that's not can... what I want to. I'm asking what you want. Yeah, I think biological males should compete with biological males. What? It, what no, but I'm asking specifically about transgender and intersex people now. What, yeah. what do you? Where do you think they should compete yeah, well, in sports? Well, let's separate transgender and intersex because intersex people don't want to be lumped in with transgenders. I mean, who are you to speak for them? Are no, you I'm, intersex? I'm letting them speak are you telling for them. me something about yourself? I'm letting them speak for them, but I'm sure you'll find statistics that will prove you wrong and bolster what I'm discussing right now. Okay, intersex sure. people don't want to be lumped in with transgender individuals because there is a biological issue. There's not a biological issue with transgender individuals. It is a societal issue. It's a is, it a, issue. is it a biological issue that you would never make a basketball team because you can't jump? Shit! That I can't jump? Yeah. Why are you making that presumption? I'm just kind of following this logic to where it might racist? conclude. No, I'm asking, are you? You're asking, am I racist? Yeah, what I'm saying is if you're so obsessed with certain types of people winning certain types of categories as if there's some sort of Males biological... Yeah. So you you're an essentialist. You're a figment of my imagination? You're an essentialist. Oh, well, let's throw that to around. What do you mean that I'm an essentialist, that I believe biological males should compete against biological males? Well, I mean, you just talk about biological males and females so much that it, it essentializes gender into a binary that doesn't include the, all no, these people that we've just been talking about. And sex into a binary. You see, all... uh, and sex. Yeah. You said gender. And, and sex. sex, yeah. I didn't mention gender, I mentioned sex. Well, I'm talking about both. Yeah, you, but I would I'm say. I'm not. Well, then let's just focus on sex. You are creating yes. a, an essentialist binary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you are saying that it is not binary, sex, then you are suggesting there should be a third division. Mm, not necessarily. What's your solution? <laughs> I'm saying we should maybe uh, stop taking sports so damn seriously and let people compete and create structures for competing that uh, aren't so damn politicized. How about that? How about no? Okay, great. So women should just shut up and take it. Eh, they're they're taking that's... it too seriously. Women are taking it too seriously. I don't seriously. think that's what I, I think you're taking it too seriously. No, I'm saying women out there are taking it too seriously. Talk to a woman. There's plenty of women here. Talk to a woman. Yeah, I have. I've spoken with many what women. What did she say? There's also what the did they say? They, what of course, they? don't want biological males to compete in women's uh, sports. Uh, all right, so I'm going to give up my seat now. Athletes. Is there a woman who would like to speak to him? Pause. It's funny he should ask because we just so happen to have talked to a female athlete, one of Leah Thomas's teammates, peers, if you will, at UPenn, to be exact, and here's what she had to say. That guy, Monticelli, seems to be uneducated. I would say that the way the rules are set up right now straight up deny women from equal educational opportunities in sport and discriminate against women by not recognizing the physical differences between men and women. And women shouldn't be forced to take a back seat in their own sport. Any, any women? Female athlete. All right, cool. Hey, it's been nice, Steve. Thank you very take much. Take care. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know. So no solution, no dog in the fight, just wrong sources. Uh, Every other conversation has been very you know, productive. I'd say, I'd say, have fun making it your career to go talk to college students who don't want to talk to you. Don't be an asshole your whole life. Now, given what's transpired, one might think that Mr. Monticelli would take the L and never speak of this embarrassing performance again. But that's not what insane people do. Instead, he took to Twitter to declare victory and attempt to dox our car. It looks like someone might be getting a little obsessed. Why are you so obsessed with me? This is the kind of delusional behavior which can only be exhibited by people who've evaded accountability or being beholden to any form of truth throughout their entire lives. That's long form for professional journalist. 
So, I mean, he pulled out some statistics. But what kind of behavior would you expect from someone who was fired for reporting fake news and is currently facing a defamation lawsuit? Now, granted, Mr. Montesmelli is innocent until proven guilty, but he's also been accused of and admitted to making inappropriate sexual remarks to random women. Shit. That's true. But hey, we all make repeatedly the same mistakes, right? We all do. I don't know. Am I just being too harsh? Comment below and let Mr. Monticelli know what you think of his time in the spotlight. Now, luckily for the country, not everyone is like Mr. Monticelli over here. And in the final installment of our three-part series on this topic, we'll be able to get back to the basics of Change My Mind with some folks who were happy to take part, sit down, have conversations, and honestly made me glad to have done it. So come back Monday, April 11th, to check that out if you aren't already tuning into The Daily Show at 10 a.m. Eastern. Steven, we were actually able to get the zoom and enhance completed on Monticelli's phone. Oh, really? Were we, were we able to get it? We'll bring it in. That's Jason Bourne. Hey, if you like this video, click one of these other videos playing in a box, hit the notification bell, or just, you know, hit the share button with your friends. If you didn't like it, do all of those things as well, or um, boycott our sponsors. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, send your email to crowdershop.com, where this shirt is available, and Dave Landau's shirt. Ooh. Right? They should, they should boycott Crowder Shop and send their email there. They should. They yeah. should also, I will send them this exact shirt yeah. with my smell on it for yep. an extra 10. Also, we have a DNA scraper filled with dead skin cells from Dave Landau. The thing is, if you want to send your complaint and boycott letter at crowdershop.com, you, you have to buy a shirt and then you, you put it in the return receipt.